A bad combination for all the doctors in the room. Um, this is this uh, is fundamentals of epidemiology, as we like to call it, fun of epi. Um, I don't necessarily think students agree. Um, what happens with fun of epi is it's been um, like a live course for two thousand uh, since two thousand and six. So we've got you know had a really mature base of um, information, and we started to go online in two thousand and sixteen. Um, so what I'm going to do now, because I've only got 15 minutes, is just step through uh, the way that we choose to use the lesson tool. Um, the lesson tool within um, Wattle, which is Moodle in drag. Um, so what happens, what we do in every single class is um, we direct the students to uh, read a couple of chapters. Of course, we don't actually uh, check whether or not they do that. We then uh, get them to step through the lesson module, which is quite interactive. And that's, that's the end of how they acquire new information. Then finally they do an exercise where they actually get to put into practice everything that they, um, that they have learnt. Um, so you see it gets increasingly interactive as it goes along. And I was thrilled to actually hear this, um, the, the talk just now from Alexandra because it sounds like we're doing a, a lot of things right, I hope. Okay, so one of the advantages of the, um, of the tool is you've got the um, uh, menu on your left, which the students have said has been really, really um, helpful for them to, uh, if they're going back to do uh, revising. And I'm just going to leap straight, obviously you do this one at a time under normal circumstances. Okay, so it starts off um, by telling you, you know, here's what we're going to learn. And that's all pretty straightforward, there's nothing particularly exciting about that. You've got your text, you've got your graphs, um, students are expected to read all this. Again, that's not much different from the book um, module, which is uh, fairly commonly used um, at ANU. Here's some more information. Um, one thing that we found very useful is using um, the glossary here. So uh, we don't expect our students to actually have a really good medical knowledge when they arrive. So being able to um, put in uh, simple definitions of simple diseases and so on was helpful. We also found that because of the large number of international students we have, as does everyone at the ANU, um, that there were certain words that were being used um, in a certain context that they didn't understand. And the classic one um, for the Chinese students was when we used the word intercourse um, because they would look up in their little dictionaries and it would say, you know, speaking to people or chatting, you know, um, without the word sexual intercourse in front of it, things like that. So, um, we, uh, so, so we put in certain definitions of ways that we would use words that might not be incredibly obvious by looking at your, um, at your dictionary. Now, I'm not going to teach the lesson, but the crucial thing here is this little thing here about the um, major underlying causes of death, because we're going to come back to this. So all this is fairly straightforward. Um, here's the diseases we care about, that's great. Oh, sorry, I meant to go back. Um, one of the advantages um, of using uh, this tool is that in the past, when we talked about um, the uh, priority areas of health in Australia, which is a thing, you know, the government says these are the things we care about. In the past, we would just have a PowerPoint slide and we'd say, well, you know, this is what we care about. Um, but what we have the capacity now to be able to do um, through a tool like Wattle is to be able to direct the student to actually go away to another website and gather the information. We don't have to repeat what the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare um, 
have said because, you know, they've already done it. We can just simply link, link to them. And the great advantage of this sort of, of doing this sort of compulsory redirect is that um, the students can spend as much or, or as little time as they like. The, the take-home message is they have to be able to remember what these nine um, uh, uh, national uh, health priority areas are. But, um, but the ones that are interested, you can see, they'll go off and they'll read every single page and they'll take it all in. Okay, so, so far so good. So at the end of every, um, every section, we have what we call check questions. And so I was interested to hear Alexandra say, you know, about practice quizzes so, or practice tests. In a way, that's what um, these are. And the feedback from the students is that they love it, the idea that they actually get an opportunity to put their, you know, to find out whether they actually remember what they're supposed to remember. Um, they're pretty straightforward. So here's a question, um, vaccination was the key cause of reduction in deaths. Well, that's actually false. So um, we will submit. And excellent. So it goes, yeah, well done. Thumbs up. And it also gives you a little extra information. But what happens when you get it wrong? So here we're saying what was the leading underlying cause of, of death in Australia, and you all remember it was uh, coronary heart disease. We're going to incorrectly answer diphtheria here. And it tells us no. It tells us a little bit about diphtheria. That's a wrong answer. But then it actually takes you back to the page where you were originally um, gathered the information. And again, the feedback from the students is they like that. It's like, oh, yeah, now I get it. I remember I was supposed to have looked at that. So at the bottom of this page, they have two options. They can try again, and that just takes them back to the same question. And so this is a slow learner. This is given another wrong, info, wrong answer, which is influenza. Um, and again, it gives you a little bit of information about, no, it's not influenza either. Um, but it doesn't put the students into an infinite loop. They can, they're adult learners, you know. And if they don't want to try again, um, they can just skip and say, right, give me the next question, um, and, uh, and away you go. And they expect this at the end of every, um, of every uh, unit, uh, every, every part of it, I should say. So what I'm going to do now is talk about um, our animations very briefly. Um, so I want session two. This is measures of disease frequency. Um, I don't want to start where I was before. And so one of the things that we actually found helpful to, is to be able to actually embed um, animations that we, we created, myself and Erin Walsh, um, we're both from the Research School of Population Health, and actually create animations that will actually help people um, to learn some of this, uh, the, the concepts. Earlier, Alexandra talked about deciding what's the best way to use technology um, on the, in your, um, depending on what you're teaching. And one of the things we thought about is um, uh, using it when there was uh, a sense of movement. You know, it doesn't matter if you had to just memorise a list of something, but if there's a sense of movement, animations can be quite useful. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to... I won't have time, I think, to play the entire thing, but it will just give you a concept of what we do. <coughs> We're now going to explain a number of key concepts in epidemiology using an imaginary research study into diabetes in a population of just six people. Six people are called Andrew, Bob, Kathy, Deb, Erin and Frank. We're going to study them over a two year period. At the beginning of the study, most of our cohort are healthy, but Frank starts the study with diabetes. <coughs> Four months into the study, Kathy acquires diabetes. Then seven months into the study, Bob also acquires diabetes. In the second year of the study, at 15 months from the start, Andrew dies. In the same month, Deb acquires diabetes. Finally, the study ends after two years. Andrew is dead, Erin is healthy, and the other four participants all have diabetes. It's not the first concept, exciting. I think. <laughs> the point of prevalence. Often this is just termed prevalence. And if the simple term prevalence is used in epidemiology, we can assume that point prevalence is what is meant. Point prevalence is the number of cases at a specified point in time divided by the total number of people in the population. A case is someone with the disease, in our case diabetes. 
Let's look at point prevalence three months into the study. You'll notice that I've specified the specific point in time in which we're interested, three months into the study. At that time, Frank had diabetes, and in fact, he'd had it since the beginning of the study. At that time, no one else had acquired diabetes. So the total number of cases, or people with the disease, was just one, and that was Frank. The total population was still six, so the point prevalence was one divided by six, or about 0.166. We would usually express this as a percentage, and we'll round it up this time. So the point prevalence of diabetes at three months was 17%. Right, so I mean, it then goes on and says, you know, here's what it was at 15 months and, you know, 21 months and, and, and all those sorts of things. Um, and uh, you might think, well, those, those stick figures are, are really a bit childish. But again, what the research shows is that if you actually have um, animations that are not identifiable as a certain gender or a certain um, ethnic group or a certain size or weight or age or whatever, um, the students are actually more likely to focus on what the, what the stick figures are doing as opposed to trying um, to make some sort of um, judgement about them. Um, so we've got six of those now, we're continuing to make uh, more of them and recently, um, and so they're also in use in uh, a university in New Zealand, in Otago um, and in a few other places around, so we're kind of sharing the joy there. Okay, so I'm just going to do one more thing, which is quickly look at exercises. Um, so I mentioned how it gets more and more interactive as you go along. So I'm going to choose causation exercise nine. So this is the part where students actually, they've learnt everything they need to know. Um, now they need to um, uh, actually work out whether or not they can uh, put it into practice. Okay, so this one, let's jump straight to question 15, which is a fabulous thing called a causal pine. Um, if you've done epidemiology, you'll understand what it's about. Um, and again, so what the students have done is they've actually had to read a paper, um, which is about um, chemicals in the home and the relation to asthma. That, so they have, and this is basically demonstrating whether or not they've actually understood what the paper um, shows. And what they have to do is um, grab these things and kind of stick them in the right place. I'm just, I know these are the wrong answers, but that's why I'm doing it. Um, and they put them in the uh, correct location, where's the other one, oh yeah, <laughs> you can't see it in the middle, um, and again, what studies show is that um, it, the very fact that they are thinking about this and they're moving their little hands to make it go actually helps them to, um, to embed the information. So in this case, um, it's come back saying um, I've got these ones wrong and, uh, and it tells me that I get the opportunity to try it again. In fact, I only got one of them right, which was the um, volatile organic chlorides. So it keeps the, that one there. I started three minutes late. It means I've got three minutes to go. So I'm going to show one more, one more very... Um, and uh, similarly, this other multifactorial pie, it's a different way of doing it. But here, um, again, the students are actually moving these things around. So, if, But if they don't understand the categories that it won't let them do that. So let's say, um, so non-English speaking is a, is a culture, um, but supposing that they didn't understand that and they tried to put it into, I don't know, life stage or something, it won't let you do it. You try and put it into household situation, that's not right. It will let you put either English speaking or non-English speaking, you know, package licences, it'll let you do all those things, but it will not let you put it into the wrong category. And again, they get to decide um, all these different things. This is actually testing whether they've understood the paper that they have read. Um, and again, they get to check and uh, do the answers. And I think that's probably all I've got time for. Very useful. Uh, who is helping you, or the academics have to learn how to make Doing it? Not my own sweet time, and is the ANU yeah. grateful? No. <laughs> 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 um, but like many things, we had to we had to prove that we could do it, and then we said yes. to the ANU, "Can you give us some money now that mm -hmm. we've been doing this on our weekends?" Yeah. Um, so what happened was, um, uh, I would design the 
the story, the, the story yes. and then I would write the script and then I would um, uh, record it. That's my charming yes. voice yeah. there. And then I would sit down with Erin Walsh, who's a, a, um, a scientific illustrator, and she would sort of storyboard, say, well, I think I'm going to get people to do this, or they're going to climb a ladder or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then we would put the two of them um, together. So um, we've got a very small grant, about $10,000 this time around, to make some more animations. Um, and, and what we're hoping to do is perhaps even monetise it, meaning that uh, not the money's going to go into our pocket, but yeah. that the ANU can get some money and therefore, you know, we so can... So it's like to... a PG order college? Yeah, or... yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Um, and the one advantage of using the animations is that we once gave a presentation to, you know, the China Scholarship Council. They come around every year and mm -hmm. uh, all the Chinese universities. And it was actually really simple to just to dub the whole thing in Chinese. You know, we just got someone to, to do that and, the, and they were very impressed with that. So. Yeah. Um, you mentioned when you send them off to the external site, to the um, Institute of Health and Welfare, I think it was, they can spend as long or as little as they like. Can you get any analytics at the end of the day when you once they've left the site? Once they've left the uh, I can tell, if I want to, I can tell um, how, how long how long they've been away. Right. I mean, they might have been having a cup of coffee or they might have been on Facebook. Yeah. Um, but what we find is that the students tend to do the whole thing as a block. Um, and so they'll do things um, along the line. I should say, by the way, that this is, this is capable of being fully online. So we run Fun of Epi fully online in second semester. But in first semester, it's both face-to-face -face and online. And so the students can kind of use this as a, as a backup kind of thing. They've gone to the lecture and then they're using it. But yeah, I can't really tell, I can't tell what they're doing on the AHW site, only that they've left for Anybody else? Any questions? <coughs> Just a quick comment. Kathy was very generous in letting the ANU Med School use some of the animations. And our students found the earlier version useful, but this is really flash. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, we, do, we took a lot of feedback, you see, on, on things that... Yeah. One thing was working with creative types, is that there was lots of all these bells and whistles, but that was actually quite distracting for the students, yes. so they said, can you make it less exciting, yeah. you know, and just really focus on what the little... What was the program come from the animation? Oh, gosh, she did tell me because I ought to know. Um, it's a version of Adobe, I think. So you have, have something in your... Sorry? In Flash, I think it's Flash. I'm not sure. So you have someone in your... In your Erin Walsh, yeah, yeah. So Erin Walsh is a scientific um, illustrator for the Research School of Population Health, and I think that there's a, you know, a lot of colleges might want to consider having someone like that because she doesn't just do animations. You know, she can do fabulous graphics, and yeah. um, some of the material that we do in Research School of Population Health is actually, for example, uh, do lessons in Vietnam about um, washing hands and things mm -hmm. like that. And so, you know, there's been a big program there to to produce um, animations for that. That's wonderful.